So I'm lucky that I'm going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic, Donald Trump. <laughs> LOL, LOL. Um, I want to just say that my presentation is not going to be a presentation to discuss the 2016 presidential elections. Even though there's a lot to discuss on that. And it's, you know, already a circus and the clowns are leading the circus. Um, um, and there's there's some serious things we had to discuss, like the Bernie Sanders development, right? And uh, I, I think it's important for me to bring that up because it's not just Trump that's uh, gathering large crowds, it's also Sanders. Uh, and, and that it's important to point out that uh, the base of these crowds are large for Sanders and for Trump, much of it based on anti-Wall Street attitudes as, as, as they're perceived. Um, and, you know, we really have to start thinking about the elections because, like, I was reading today, for example, that within the, one of the largest unions in the country, SEIU, there's an internal struggle going on where some uh, uh, more radical elements, although I know them well, and, you know, radical might, a little are, you know, uh, but they want to hold a, uh, the discussion on whether they should endorse Clinton or not, because there is movement within SEIU for uh, some activists who want to endorse Sanders instead of Clinton. Now, in a way, that's a little progressive, but really what's on the table is how much better it would be if the unions spent all their time and resources on organizing the unorganized instead of spending all this money for the capitalist politicians. That's what we would rather see. Um, but um, but I, I raise the Trump development as a way to say that um, in the context of the presidential elections, Lines are being drawn in this country. That's, that's what I think is happening right now. On the one hand are those who believe that Sanders may be the one who will stand up to Wall Street and maybe put a halt or at least forcefully push back the attacks on the working class. And from everything that we've gathered, the people who are going to the Sanders rally, the people in his camp are tend to be a little bit more progressive, or at the very least, liberal. You know, a progressive is a little bit more progressive than a liberal. Liberals are, yeah, you know, it can go either way. Um, and the and on the other hand, are those around Donald Trump who also have a very strong anti-Wall Street, anti-establishment streak. But this camp is thoroughly racist and reactionary. But at the heart of it, we gotta know that at the base of both these camps are the reactions by the masses to the looming and accelerating economic crisis. The base of both camps are worried about the growing disparity between the rich and poor, the rising unemployment, housing foreclosures, and all the rest. And so when you have politicians talking about these issues, some of the masses are paying attention. Now we've seen this before in history, when fascist, racist demagogues that rise up during an economic crisis and take advantage of workers' discontent with the status quo and funnel that discontent, unfortunately, into a racist reactionary movement. Hitler, George Wallace, David Duke, all have done the same. These are just some exam examples. And this is why I thought it was important that we talk about Trump, <clears throat> Trump tonight. Um, chances are that from everything that we understand, the ruling class doesn't really need Trump at the White House because the Democrats and the Republicans are very capable of carrying out their wishes as they have been. Uh, but nonetheless, this. But nonetheless, the seeds of racism that Trump is planting are very dangerous. Whether Trump is popular by the ruling class or not, <clears throat> unwitting or not, he is helping them by pushing the Republicans and all the rest further and further to the right. While the base... <clears throat> I'm so sorry. While the base of both camps 
in the Sanders and Trump momentum may be concerned about Wall Street. The elephant in the room is their total inability to address in a genuine way the most critical question for the U.S. working class right now, and that is the movement in defense of black lives. <clears throat> Sanders pays lip service at best to the Black Lives Movement. And Trump, will need us to say, Trump represents nothing less than white supremacy. And it also serves to, but this also serves to expose the true nature of democracy under capitalism. Because you can be a genuine fool, not even all that smart or eloquent, but if you have some celebrity status and you have several billion dollars, you can get on the media and become a sort of serious candidate and be in the media day and night all the time. It's Trump 24-7. And what a sight. He began to make the news by making the issue of immigration the centerpiece of his campaign. <clears throat> the first major controversy was calling all Mexicans coming across the border rapists and criminals. He says if elected, he will build a 2,000 mile wall all along the border to keep immigrants out. If elected, he will deport not only the undocumented, but even their children that are born here. And he has made a, a racist controversy about anchor babies, when we should say that the real anchor babies are the children of the ruling class, who, who do nothing but inherit wealth and have all the privilege and rights without ever having to work a day. They're the real anchor babies. And he has said that in building this 2,000 mile wall, that he, he knows that he can make Mexico pay for it. He has made comments about women so offensive that he should have been thrown off the air immediately. Instead, he gets more news. When he made a horrible slur against the Asian community and the news person was interviewing him later, he very softly, ever so carefully called him out on it. Well, Trump said the people of this country are tired of political correctness, that they want a strong America, and that's America with three Ks. <laughs> now is not the time for political correctness, Trump says. Now is the time for making America number one. But let us be clear. Taking a stand against political correctness are code words for pushing back the struggles of the oppressed. They are code words to tell people of color, shut up, get back, and stay back. And it is pandering and misleading white workers by letting them think that it is immigrants or people of color that are their enemies, when in fact it is Trump himself and the bourgeoisie that are the problem. After he offends someone, Trump will always say, oh, no, no, Mexicans love me. Women love me. Asians love me. And you know who else loves Trump? David Duke. That's who. The New Yorker published a very interesting article a few days ago that highlighted all the different right wing and white supremacist and nationalist fascist kinds of organizations who were all uh, all uh, polarized and all coming forth and supporting Donald Trump. And this is very interesting because this is what this is why the ruling class is letting him do his, you know, whatever. Um, his vitriol has seen some very very ominous results. For example, two brothers from South Boston attacked a homeless Latino man. They broke his nose and urinated on his face. The police said, one of them said, that Donald Trump is right. All these illegals need to be deported. When Trump was asked at a press conference about the case, he said, I think that's a shame, but I haven't heard about it. I will say that people that are following me are very passionate. They love this country, and they want this country to be great again. And they are very passionate, I will say that, he said. He brings up this uh, 
a woman who was uh, killed in uh, San Francisco by an un by a undocumented worker who you know had flipped and carried out an attack and she died and it became uh, an excuse to go against uh, sanctuary cities uh, because Sa San Francisco has a very uh, progressive policy of not having the cops work with immigration and Trump used this case as a way to attack that in a very classic divide and can conquer uh, tactic, at one of his events in Las Vegas and Phoenix, he brought on stage an African-American man whose 17-year-old son had been killed also by an undocumented worker. And he used that as a, an excuse to carry out uh, attacks on immigrants. But we got to say that this is demo... <clears throat> What's the word? Oh, my God. Demo Demagogy. Demagogy at its best. Because we all know what would happen to the black community if Trump was elected. And his racism is nothing new because there's stuff that's been coming out that uh, in 2000, he ran an ad that was opposing uh, a casino that the Native American community wanted to open up. And he uh, ran these ads, even though he didn't use his name, it was secrets. And he ran these ads to rival this business because it was going to be a rival to his business. And he had a picture of drug paraphernalia. And he asked, are these the new neighbors that we want? And he was countered about that. Um, black workers in Trump's casinos report that in the past, whenever Trump would come to the casinos, all the black workers were forced to go to the back so that he couldn't see them. And some of the workers there report that happening. So I want to uh, talk about what happened today. You know, some of the, uh, a lot of the news has been about whether uh, Trump will sign the pledge not to run as an independent. And the Republican Party has been a little worried about that for whatever reason. Um, and, you know, it's like, Maybe Deirdre or some of the other comments can talk about the whole issue of polls, but like the press makes such a big deal about these polls. Mm -hmm. And my hunch is that these polls are mainly calling, you know, conservative folks, you know, maybe people who have a higher income, that sort of thing, you know, and who knows if they're real. I mean, who knows, you know, nobody calls me, you know. Uh, um, so they've been very worried that uh, poll that uh, Trump has been leading the polls and now after poll is now Carson the African-American uh, uh, candidate who's a neurosurgeon who's really really reactionary also and says awful things uh, about the Black Lives Matter movement I I uh, Joan Gibbs posted something that said that he had said that slavery was good for the African-American community because it made them stronger or something like that. Just makes outrageous statements like that. He's now second. And Jeb Bush, who is probably the one that the pundits are saying is going to win, is like getting further and further behind. So today he had a press conference. It's There was all these Asian folks behind him. I'm like, okay. Turns out they were Indonesian. The Minister of Foreign Relations from Indonesia was standing there with Trump. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. You know, I'm assuming that Indonesia is a very fascist right wing country standing with Trump. But still, it's like, really? So anyway, and, 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 um, he made this big announcement, and his big thing about Bush is just saying that Bush has no energy. He's so, no energy, no energy. That's all he talks about. And then afterwards on CNN, they had a, a number of, of mainstream um, pundits who, you know, are savvy and intelligent, and, uh, you know, you want to listen to what they have to say because they do represent, you know, some thinking of the ruling class. But then they also have... Now, CNN also now has these idiots, and most of them, one of them is an expert on Trump who was 
on his apprentice show and who's Latina, well, Hispanic, not Latina. She's Hispanic because that's what you call the sellout Latinos. And she was saying that, that Latinos do like Trump. Everybody loves Trump. We love Trump. And it turns out that she's Cuban-American. So that made sense that she would be Cuban, you know, and a reactionary. Um, so I want to just conclude uh, by saying that this is more entertaining. This is, but we shouldn't take it lightly. I think that in the coming period, it wouldn't hurt for us to consider having a demonstration at Donald Trump, a serious demonstration. Uh, we really, you know, really have to not only attack this fascism and racism that is spewing out of the airwaves, but we also have to at attack the media for putting these awful spins. You know, you cannot let someone get away with saying these anti-Asian slurs. I mean, it's, it's, all, it's a shred of all decency, you know, to even allow that kind of stuff on television and not be challenged by these forces. And CNN seems to be, you know, trying to catch up with Fox News, you know, to pander, you know, to the, to the right wing. But, and even though it's, it's very serious that this racism is being spewed out and that lines are being drawn and that, and that white workers for the most part are being attracted to this, there are many of those white workers that we have got to influence both in the Bernie Sanders and those where it's not too late in the, in the Trump camp to explain to them that neither of these candidates are going to put an end to the economic crisis, that only the mobilization of workers for their interest, that history shows us that the only way to stop the gentrification, the house foreclosures, police killings, and all the rest is to, is to push back and fight for our interest. We don't think that the ruling class needs Trump to be, uh, do their bidding. But we also know that the people of this country, for the most part, are moving to the left. That it's not just black folks that are fighting for the Black Lives Matter movement. It's not just immigrants that are fighting for immigrants. It is a multinational movement, young people that are coming forth who understand that this is bullshit, that this is wrong, that this that helps no one. Um, and, that, and that just the fact that we were able to win same-sex marriage shows you that there's progress being made in this country. And even though the right wing would like to push it back to 1950, the workers cannot allow that. Uh, a woman clerk today had to be uh, arrested because she would not issue um, um, licenses to gay couples. And I consider that a victory of our movement, that sh she had to be arrested. And that right wing elements like this, reactionary Christian elements, even though they're well financed and uh, on the airwaves, we have confidence in the working class. We have confidence that the people spilling across the border are coming here with great ideas of revolutionary struggle. We are confident that the Black Lives Matter movement is going to be successful. How can it not? How can it not? And so all we have to do is organize to stop it. So I'm just going to end with one announcement that sort of is a counter to Trump. The PPA, because we haven't announced it anywhere, but the PPA is going to have this meeting on September the 22nd. Please put it on your calendar. And that meeting is going to be a meeting where we are inviting Marilyn Zuniga, from New Jersey, that was, is a sister who was arrested, who was uh, uh, hired, fired for um, sending kids, sending her kids letters to Mumia. Uh, she's going to come speak. Uh, Genesis Gutierrez, who is the trans Mexican activist who disrupted Obama at the White House, is going to come up from LA and Bree Newsom, the woman who brought down the Confederate flag. Yeah, it's going to be a kick-ass meeting. 
And these are the kinds of answers that show that our movement is stronger than any Donald Trump. So let's build a movement to dump Trump. The point about how the Trump phenomena is absolutely a response to the Black Lives Matter movement is absolutely true. And the reason why they have uh, made a decision to go after immigrants and to use immigrants and Latinos in particular is because they think they can get away with it, whereas they don't think they can get away with it if they carried out that same kind of vitriol against the black community, you know, which is to, to the community's credit, you know, that that happens. Um, but it is extremely dangerous. And even though we don't think that he will probably become the Republican contender, uh, and it probably will be, or maybe even Biden will get in. We don't know. You know, it might be Biden, it might be Clinton uh, as the candidates. The the racist harangue is definitely a danger, and that is what we're seeing. Not just about Trump, but you know, uh, because of the attacks on the black community. I mean, this week alone, we've seen how. Uh, uh, individuals in the black community have carried out uh, revenge in Virginia to the two the um, anchor people that were on the air the the cop in Houston shout out you know uh, um, but all of it all of it has been has resulted in the language of the media to become more pro cop all the experts that are being interviewed are vicious pro cop and they're making it sound as if this is legitimate even to the point for example when they were talking about what happened in Harris County uh, one of the people that was being interviewed one of the the pundits the authority on the issue even said that the people in St. Paul, Minnesota shouldn't have been marching because they were marching without a permit. As if you can say that and, and not be challenged. That you can say that the people don't have a right to march and not and, and that it's so it's putting out these ideas that are repressive and reactionary. And it's just part of the of the of the vitriol that's going on right now. And it is very dangerous and it is in response to the Black Lives Matter movement. And that's why uh, I'm so excited about this meeting, you know, with, with Genesette and Bree and and Marilyn. And it's a contribution not just because of Bree, you know, uh, needing the support and because Genesette is representing the immigrant. And she, Genesette is a trans undocumented activist who's very active in the Black Lives Matter demonstrations. But this is important to sort of counter, you know, uh, the divisions that they're, that the ruling class is attempting to do right now, and why the importance of building solidarity is so important right now. And it's also very important for our white friends and allies and comrades to be even more aggressive against racism right now, and really, you know, try to find ways to, to show our solidarity at all times right now uh, because of this dangerous threat.